Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Methanol Madness brought to us by Dalton's Landscape Supplies. We're all recovering from our last meeting at uh, the Racecourse Hotel at Molodge Ruapuna Speedway. Of course that was the K&T Drainage South Island Midget Car Championship. Some pretty good racing there uh, AJ, a slightly smaller than anticipated crowd but uh, a pretty good night overall. Yeah overall uh, it certainly got the pass mark didn't it? The racetrack was stunning, uh, very fast and nearly a new TQ1 lap record and we did get a new 25 lap midget car record, pretty darn good. Yeah absolutely, the track uh, really uh, being uh, conditioned nicely after that uh, small uh, issue we had with the midget car title and uh, certainly the racing is very fast. Louise you were there and uh, there was some pretty good racing in the midgets but uh, also the TQ20. Yeah, some really good racing throughout all of the fields throughout the night, but cool to see another first-time winner in the TQ class. Well, to get the show started, of course, it's Crash of the Week, brought to us by Elite Re-Roofing, Mike Bell and his uh, commercial roofers. And uh, we're going to take a look at the TQ feature race here. This is about uh, three quarters of the way into the race. There's been multiple restarts here. And if we have a look at Cameron Soul on the inside there, you can just see him ride a wheel there, and uh, over it goes, AJ. Yeah, it looked like Cameron may have just uh, slipped a little up off his racing line there, drifted out, caught Scott Bailey's car, and over she went. And that was actually a bit of a bell ringer, that one. Uh, he was a bit wonky on his legs for a wee while afterwards, but uh, yeah, good to see him walk away from it. It was nasty. Yeah, Cameron Sowell's been improving all year, and uh, certainly he was anxious to get that uh, restart. We can see that uh, the radiator's blown up, there's plenty of panel damage, and as you said before, he just rides up there, but a few sparks... Uh, from uh, the Excess Man TQ and uh, a fairly violent uh, crash uh, to watch that one. Uh, doesn't look as bad on the video and of course we see uh, Cameron just uh, going to the safety of the infield there. A busy week for those boys getting that car ready and we hope that they can uh, be at our next meeting. Well time to move on to the Herrick Creek review of the night and the first class we'll look at Louise is the quarter midgets. Yeah, it was round three of the Mike Greer Holmes Nelson quarter midget series, which was cool for a lot of drivers with a big field to be contesting for the series at their home track. It was Jack Brownlee's picking up another feature win at the track, but his first of the series, which was crucial to his points with um, Darcy Rasmussen in second, and then Brooke Clark actually finishing in third. So Jack was able to take over the series points from Colin Thompson, and Brooke also picked up driver of the day, which over the last couple of weeks she's really been improving, and to put it on the podium was a great result for her. Yeah, it was popular at the podium that night. I remember everyone uh, giving her a great cheer. She's certainly one of the popular quarter midget drivers. Jack Brownlee's getting his uh, lap times down pretty low these days as well, and uh, possibly a lap record. Well, the next class we'll look at is the V6 Wingless Sprints, and joining the show is Josh Henderson. He's our commentator at the track. Josh, uh, tell us how the V6 Wingless Sprints played out. Yeah, we had a uh, normal heat, three heat plus one feature deal this time around for the wingless sprints and uh, it was really action packed all weekend long uh, but we also did have a bit of best pairs mixed in there as well um, which we'll get to a little bit later on but uh, Kirk Hawkins, Adam Evans and Mark Morris uh, were your three race winners. Uh, Mark Morris obviously winning the feature after a little bit of contact between Bailey Clive um, and uh, Adam Evans on the last lap of the last corner so um, it was really close racing from, from everyone and, and um, yeah, Mark Morris, that car didn't even start before the, the weekend got going, so he's he's made a real good recovery and moved up into the uh, the feature win. Yes, we were both uh, commenting on his uh, car in the pits. He couldn't get it started uh, before the uh, warm-ups, and uh, miraculously he uh, ended up winning the feature. Yes, a little bit of controversy in the uh, feature race. Uh, Bailey Clive sent his car in as hot as anything going into the last corner, taking Adam Evans out. Now, uh, officially, uh, Bailey Clive was able to hold on to that position, but uh, certainly when he went to get his podium, uh, or victory lane, I should say, he was uh, acknowledging that uh, he shouldn't have won that race, and uh, Adam Evans perhaps had the moral victory in the weekend. But nevertheless, uh, AJ, it was pretty good racing. The V6 Wingless Sprints are uh, going particularly well, and they've got their big rumble coming up as well. They have, and I, I just like the way that class is building momentum. You know, we're getting some younger guys in there, um, you know, the likes of Shooter Hawkins and Andrew Gregg, you know, they're, they're clinging on try to hold out these young guys. And every time Adam Evans is there, you know, he, he does bring something to it. 
just so rep for Mark Morris. You know, he's been around for a hundred years <laughs> out there at the Speedway, and you know, he puts everything into it. And yeah, he'll be quite happy to have got that feature when didn't matter how he got it, he got it. Yeah, absolutely. A good racing family, uh, the Morrises, and uh, certainly his boy Brody going well. Uh, Jess, of course, uh, another racer, and uh, Mark uh, taking out the feature race. Next class we'll look at is the sprint cars, and just a very small field of sprint cars. Of course, we had some of our drivers uh, up north for the North Island Championship. And and uh, a field of just six took to the feature race, uh, AJ, but man, it was exciting, wasn't it? It was a very good feature race. Uh, yeah, forget the fact that there were only six cars. Um, maybe a 15 lapper might have done a field like that some more justice, but Dave Kerr, you know, he was on a mission and yep. he had that big old Ford just cranked up. Um, I don't know whether Dave's sort of maybe lacking a little bit of race fitness or general fitness, but uh, he was starting to get wider and wider as, as the race went on. And then, of course, just going down that back chute the last time, just uh, sort of went up the wall just slightly, and Joel Myers Jr., he did not need another <laughs> invitation to steal that one, did he? So another last gasp win for Joel Myers Jr. Yeah, Joel Myers Jr. making a habit out of uh, winning feature races on the last race, uh, dive bombing uh, in a previous uh, couple of features, uh, taking out uh, the opportunity when Dave presented it to him in this uh, feature, AJ. Uh, he's had a great career here at uh, Ruapuna, hasn't he, Joel Myers Jr.? He has, and he, he adds a lot to it both on and off the track. You know, he's more than happy to help the, the other drivers with ideas. And, you know, here's this kid, he's like, you know, 18 years of age. But, you know, he's just brought right into it and, and helping everyone out. I think maybe the real highlight was the heat race where Caleb Bourne held him out. You know, the, mm. the crowd mm. gave Caleb Bourne, you know, justifiably a really good ovation because, man, he had to have it all hanging out to hold Myers. Um, from getting past him. I did watch that and uh, it's been hot and cold for Caleb recently. He took that big tumble at the last uh, meeting, got that car up and running. That's a credit to you and Ray and uh, whoever else helped uh, that car get put together. But uh, I watched the setup on that car. He was fair honking along, wasn't he? He was not going to be beaten by Joel Myers Jr. And as you said, the crowd uh, supported him as well. Yep, and Caleb's going to be going over and working for the Myers team a little in the state, so he might have been just showing Joel and his old man on the uh, on the stream that, hey, I, I actually know how to drive these things, I know how to set them up, so uh, yeah, what a big opportunity for him. Yeah, just a wee side note there, Dylan Fawzi and Caleb Bourne uh, catching up with uh, Joel Myers Jr. and crewing for uh, the, the uh, Myers team over our winter, so uh, pretty interesting times. Well, the next class we'll look at is the uh, TQs, and uh, Louise, the TQ20 played out. It was a pretty interesting race, uh, full of drama. Yeah, a little bit of a different format than the TQ20 normally runs. Of course, sponsored by Access Man, great supporters of Speedway, it was decided this year that they would go fastest off the back, and then um, the last quali or the top qualifier was due to start last. They would select who started next to them and go on and on and on. So it's a strategy we've seen come into play a couple of years in a row with the um, other events in the TQ class, but it was definitely unique to see it brought into this one, which saw uh, Tyler Warnock being top qualified choose Ethan Smith, and they both started off the rear, worked their way up to finish in fourth for Ethan, third for Tyler, second went to Scott Bailey and it was of course Montana Jamison picking up her first TQ feature win. Yeah it was a great win by Montana and uh, we may catch up with her very shortly but uh, you're a fan of this format aren't you uh, AJ? It really brings um, let's say the mid packers uh, up to the front and they've got a really good chance to uh, defend and win a feature race. Oh, absolutely, you know, and think of the confidence that it gives some of those drivers. Rebecca Bugler mm. led a good number of laps and, and then Montana pounced and, you know, she took her opportunity. But what it does is it gives some drivers who may be sort of are only near the front when they're having their grid starts, yeah. um, gives them an opportunity to be, get really racy, and, and I absolutely love that format, particularly for the TQs. I think it, it's, a, it's a sort of deal that just sells itself to the TQ class, which is very, very competitive, but there's also that sort of split in driver ability and so on, so you know, a lot of newcomers and that in there, and um, yeah, it made a heck of a race. Well, we've seen uh, some names that we don't see towards the front. Logan Scammell had uh, a great race, actually. He ended up fifth, and there was a moment where he was uh, actually on the podium for third, and uh, there's plenty of uh, supporters in his crew uh, uh, supporting every lap that he was doing. I see uh, Cameron Soul, not so good for him with that big crash in the feature, but uh, he was putting in some tidy laps. Uh, Isabel Clark was up there as well, and she did uh, particularly well. But, of course, it was really um, Montana Jameson, who was so used to winning in uh, quarter midgets many years ago. She was so in that class and great to see her take out that feature race. 
Yeah, and it was very popular too, because like Montana and her family, they've been there at the Speedway for an awful long time. You know, it's what they know. It's what they do on Saturday nights and that. And, and um, you know, there was plenty of backslapping going on after it because it was a very well-deserved race. And, you know, Tyler Warnock, he tried everything, yeah. but um, he just couldn't do it. Um, he had to make his way through the traffic and Scott Bailey and those guys, you know, Montana was gone like a robber's dog. Every time the yellow came on, yet part of you was saying, uh, they're going to get it this time. <laughs> and they threw the green, and next thing she just sort of started extending the advantage that she had time and time again. So, yeah, very popular. Yeah, it was a great race by uh, Montana for sure. And uh, Montana actually joins the show. Uh, welcome into Methanol Madness, uh, Montana. It was a fantastic win by you the other day, but... Uh, like uh, not like all features you had to do it pretty tough there must have been multiple restarts there and uh, what was it like being inside the cab there and uh, being taken on so many times with restarts um it was pretty stressful um <laughs> i've never had that many restarts in a race let alone leading it and especially with the fast scott bailey next to me i knew that i had my work cut out for me as soon as that that was happening but I knew I had a fast car and I knew that I had the car to do it. I just needed to hit my marks and I think it really paid off. Well, I think it's a lot of that uh, early uh, quarter midget experience really coming through. Uh, clearly, you've been racing for a long, long time now and uh, you're well supported by your dad, Mark, who's uh, instrumental in getting that car sorted out for you. But uh, we were all there. Did you hear the crowd cheering for you? You, you might have uh, recognised that after the race itself, but uh, all of uh, the Speedway family really wanted you to win that race and uh, you certainly held them out uh, pretty nicely uh, and uh, beat uh, Scott Bailey home which was uh, a pretty good scalp to beat yeah I could see everyone down the back straight and I can especially see my family um, and my pit crew at the fence sort of warming up and getting ready and I could tell that I obviously had the car speed to do it by yeah. their reaction about five to go um, that was erupting it was actually quite cool to see um, you know I'm I'm sort of like the dark horse of that race being picked third last to into the grid, I think it was really my moment to show that I can compete and I had the car to do it and I had the speed and I think going forward I can be a real contender for the meetings coming up which is really, really positive. Brilliant. Well, it seems like it's uh, really given you a boost to your, your confidence. You've always been a fast driver. I mean, uh, we were referring back to your quarter midget days. You were virtually unbeatable uh, back in the day. And how many years have you been uh, racing now? Um, well, I've been racing since I was seven, so and I'm 21 now, so just a few years. I've only had one season of that off, so yeah, quite some time now. I feel like it's been like forever. <laughs> I couldn't go without it. Well, you've been well supported by your dad. Your brother helps out from time to time as well, and you've got some good sponsors on there. Uh, what was it like back in the pits afterwards? Uh, I'm sure you've had a pretty interesting week as well. Oh, it was awesome. Plenty of hugs from family and, you know, congratulating my dad. He's a big part of what I do and where I am. And, you know, my family, the appreciation from, you know, I had all of the drivers come over and congratulate me. And it's a huge respect to the other drivers out there that they're always so appreciative of, of you getting a good result and you yeah. support them. So I think the grade is in a really good place. Yeah. Well, look, that's uh, good stuff, Montana. I'm sure you're going to be uh, looking forward to the next meeting. When can we expect to see you down at the track? I'll be, I'll be at the next meeting, which is our, our team's event, so our best pairs, which I'm really stoked about because I got second on the podium last year with Jess Morris. So I'm really looking forward to that event. And fingers crossed we can do a double podium, which would be awesome. Uh, good stuff. Hey, look, uh, thanks for joining the show, Montana. A very popular one at Ruapuna on the weekend, uh, mostly from uh, all the other TQ drivers and people that have seen you and your family racing around the track for many, many years. Great result, AJ. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, just how good is it seeing the drivers celebrating and enjoying the moment? And, you know, we start thinking about Aaron Findlay a few weeks ago taking out his first feature race in Montana, you know, doing it this time. And there's a number of other drivers that, you know, so they may get second or third in the race, but they're absolutely stoked. And that is what it is all about, you know, celebrate, enjoy. And, and the Speedway community are getting on board with that too, you know. Mm. They're, they're no longer sitting there with their hands in their pockets all night long. They're making some noise and, and they're applauding the genuine effort. Well the next class we'll look at is the midgets and it was our feature class for the evening and it was the K&T Drainage South Island Midget Car Championships. Louise, uh, what were the results? 
Yeah, got off to a pretty interesting start there with Ben Morgan, obviously, trying to battle in that first position there with Jeremy Webb. Once Jeremy was running away with it, there was really no catching him. With Jeremy picking up his third South Island midget title, Ben Morgan finishing second for the second year in a row. So he's really going for another uh, midget win, obviously. It's super important to that team, and they've been going really well the last couple of years. And third place, Liam McCubrey worked his way up there. He kind of fell back at a few, uh, one stage and then started ripping the top and, and just made it up to the podium, which was a great result after the last couple of weeks they've had. Yeah, it was really impressive by Jeremy Webb. Uh, most people realised that he actually got a new car, got it all uh, sorted out, and uh, they had that car absolutely firing after that disastrous uh, title that they had where they couldn't get their uh, car to go. So uh, plenty of uh, work in the background and great re reward for the uh, three-time South Island midget car champion. He really did it easy in the end, didn't he, uh, AJ? And uh, he's got all the potential in the world, and clearly he's uh, put it on the track. Well, we mentioned that last week about, you know, there's no doubting his ability and at that stage we didn't know about the new car mm. and it was only after we'd gone on air that he sent me a photo of the engine I'm thinking hello something's gone on here but the, there's one thing that stands out about Jeremy Webb and, and for, on Saturday night he was smiling yep. and you know he, he's, he's a pretty serious sort of customer but he was walking around with a big smile uh, and he was enjoying it you could tell that and uh, he's got a few points to prove but he's also now saying gee, if only we can get a couple of three more cars here in the South Island, yep. you know, how good could it be? And that's what we want too. And, um, you know, he's, he's as keen as. Well, he did mention on his podium speech that uh, he's looking forward to racing his car down in the South Island again. And uh, not sure how serious uh, you are with that, Jeremy, but we certainly would love to see you here. And uh, with that new power plant of yours, man, whew, that is a fast machine. Uh, second, as uh, Louise indicated, Ben Morgan. Man, how good's uh, Ben Morgan at the moment? He is just so consistent in the TQs and the midget and uh, really uh, was clear of uh, Liam McCubrey for a long time and uh, it was a very good second that he achieved. He's an absolute talent, isn't he? Uh, mm. You know, he, he showed at the Nationals that he can mix it with the big names and, and he can beat some of the big names as well. And so, you know, boy, he's got a, a bright future and you can you just start looking at the calibre that there is in their midget car ranks. OK, there's uh, 13 locals there on Saturday night, but when you start looking at the talent, mm. you know, any one of those drivers can pull something out of the hat and the midget car class um, are very possibly going to be the stars of the show in the in the very near future. Absolutely. Uh, didn't see Jack Lowe uh, highlighting much there. Not sure if they had some uh, motor issues there after his sensational uh, national title performance. Uh, we were hoping for big things out of Jack. Uh, Liam McCubrey, as Louise indicated, was ripping around the top, one of the uh, only drivers to actually take the risk, and uh, he really got some momentum going there for a while. It's been a hell of a run for the uh, Everett Motorsport team, hasn't it, AJ? No, oh, they've had to come out of the trenches half a dozen <laughs> times this season. What, what I liked about uh, Liam's race was the fact that he obviously made a decision, I'm going up the top, mm. and it didn't really pay off for a couple of laps or so, and I'm sort of thinking, gee, has he done the right thing? But he out Jack Lowe Jack Lowe, because normally Jack goes up there. Yeah. And um, Liam, he persevered with it, and man, did he build up that momentum. And when you're running around the top, that's what you've got to have. You've got to have the build, you've got to build the momentum, and then you've got to maintain it. And he drove exceedingly well. If it had been a 30 lapper, who knows where he might have ended up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, folks, if you didn't already know, it's a new lap record, sorry, a new 25 lap record for Jeremy Webb, uh, beating the previous uh, record by 10 seconds, which was set by Brad Mosen. So Brad Mosen is no slug. So congratulations to you, Jeremy. You've got an absolute rocket ship under you and uh, you drove that race perfectly. Well, folks, it's time to take a break, and on the back end of that, we've got Dirt Track News. This ain't your fancy store-bought stuff. This is Herrick Creek Moonshine, handcrafted right here in New Zealand. Made with real corn by real people and a whole lot of heart. It's smooth, it's strong, it's real. Experience New Zealand in a jar with Herrick Creek Moonshine. Welcome to Wellington's largest caravan and RV shop. CB Caravans and RV Centre look after repairs, maintenance and they are leak specialists. CB Caravans and RV Centre import UK caravans. Need to sell? They can help. CB Caravans and RV Centre, your caravan solution. Catch up with Will and Wendy today. 
It's time to move on to dirt track news brought to us by CB Caravans and RV Centre. And the first item we'll look at, uh, Louise, is the New Zealand TQ Grand Prix. We've got a couple of our drivers competing there. Yeah, so headed up to Miani for this Saturday's racing will of course be the 1NZ of Jeremy Webb and the 33C of Tyler Warnock, both incredibly fast cars from the south, so we've just seen Tyler make his way through the field and our feature. It'll be interesting to see how that kind of goes out for them. The last time they were in Miani for the New Zealand title, the track was pretty rough and it didn't really go mm. to plan for either of them. Of course, with Jeremy Webb not picking up a South, uh, New Zealand title sorry, um, that weekend, but both of them headed up, so I think it'll be interesting. There's a pretty big field, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see kind of who comes out on top there. But there's also TQ's racing at Western Springs on Friday night, so it's a big weekend for them. Yeah, it's a long haul up for those uh, drivers, and uh, hopefully they can get some good results. Uh, Tyler Warnock's uh, probably full of uh, confidence. Uh, AJ, he had a pretty good uh, attempt at the lap record in the weekend. He will. He, he missed it by half a coat of paint, didn't he? And like that was the fastest time since that record was set by Caleb Curry a couple of three seasons ago. So, uh, man, he was going. Yeah, he's got his confidence back, uh, has Tyler, and uh, certainly uh, deserves a wee bit of luck. It's been pretty horrendous for those guys in the last season or two. Josh, uh, we've got some info on the uh, V6 wingless sprint rumble. Yeah, rumble's coming up. It's uh, only a couple of months away now, and we've got... Uh, 30 entries confirmed for the Rumble and five on reserve. So it's a really on in demand uh, event. So that's our max entries for the Wingless Sprint Rumble. And then we've got five waiting on the waiting list if anyone does drop out. Those names can include Luke McClymont, um, obviously our regulars like Kurt Hawkins, Andrew Gregg, and uh, obviously our one NZ, Bailey Clive. But we've also got uh, Gene Spooner. Uh, he'll join in a Wingless Sprint and Laurie Peterson as well coming up from Auckland. Oh, I'm pleased Laurie's making that trip uh, down. He's uh, a good driver from the North Island. And Gene Spooner, haven't seen Gene in a V6 wingless sprint for a long time. He was very good when he uh, he was competing, which would be three or four seasons ago. Yeah, I mean, Gene has been living in Australia. He's back home again, and uh, he's going to run the wingless, and who knows what he's going to do next year, or who knows what we listen to <laughs> that he's going to do next year. The rumble is pretty much the New Zealand championship, and, yeah. and look, you know, politics play play its plays its part and that you know some classes get championships some don't and i would say there's more tracks in new zealand that contract six shooters now than contract mini sprints mm. mini sprints get a national championship and it's a bit of a bugbear in that there's a, a few you know sort of inequities you could say <laughs> that, that are going on there but uh, this is their national championship and it'll be an absolute barn burner yeah, well, we might be speaking out of turn here, Speedway NZ, but it might be time to look at the V6 wingless sprint as a uh, national title. Well, uh, Western Springs kicked off its first meeting for the year, and uh, Louise, uh, the midgets and sprint cars were racing. Thomas Meserol was in town. Uh, he's uh, returned from America. Looks like he had a pretty good result as well. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than a sold-out Western Springs venue, even at limited capacity. Everyone showed up. People travelled from far and wide and internationals as well, with Peter Murphy being there working on the track from America. Mm. I think it goes to show how important the venue is to Auckland and to the Speedway community as well. But um, the midgets obviously making their return to the, their home. Western Springs has always been the best place for midgets in the country. Um, Team is racing for BSL this year, or this time around that he's visiting, mm. obviously. Um, a little bit more uh, experience under his belt now racing against these guys and a little bit more of a reliable car as well. So he was actually running up in the top five in the feature before he unfortunately biked up and his shot came off. So it was pretty unfortunate there, um, but nevertheless, a better results than he's had the last couple of times that he's uh, raced here in New Zealand. So it was Michael Pickens picking up the midget win with Alec Inslee, another podium for the young gun, Alec, finishing mm -hmm. second there, and then Brad Mosin in third. Uh, we also had some sprint car racing there. Connor Rangi didn't go so well. No, very unfortunate turn of events for Connor. Obviously his first time to Western Springs, travelling up ahead of this weekend's New Zealand title, looking to get some laps under his belt. Didn't quite go to plan, didn't get as many as he would have hoped with it after the checkers incident actually writing his chassis off. Ooh, a difficult moment for uh, Connor, and uh, certainly that's a very expensive uh, moment. And uh, probably the frustration for them will be that it happened after the checker. So uh, an unfortunate incident, which I believe uh, Dean Brindle was part of, and uh, Richard Battersby. So uh, hopefully uh, Connor can get that car up and running. Of course, it is the Nationals coming up this weekend.
Time to move on to the Herrick Creek preview. Just one big meeting happening this week at Western Springs on the 23rd and 24th. Of course, it's the Auto Super Shops Sprint Car title. And plenty of uh, big guns fighting this one out at Western Springs. AJ, what's your thoughts on it? It's uh, going to be a very tough battle. I've uh, been up there a number of times for sprint car national events, and uh, you know every now and again there's a surprise one. And you know Kerry Brokus won it up there a few years ago, and he wasn't in among the first twenty names that we mentioned the whole <laughs> night long. Yeah. Um, you know it's a very unforgiving battleground for sprint cars. There's no escape routes. You've got to know your way around the place, and it does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, I'm actually going to punt for Jonathan Allard on this one. Uh, J.A., he sat out most of the season, uh, but he's fresh and he is just so keen and really wants to do this. You know, he's, he's getting to the pointy end of his career now and um, another guy I'd love to see get a good result locally would be Matthew Levisage. Uh, mm. He has proven time and time and time again up there at Western Springs that he is up for it up at Western Springs. And sentimental favourite, probably... Um, Jamie McDonald, you know, he's on mm. the, the final season of what's been a brilliant career. So, you know, there's uh, 10% of the field. <laughs> exactly. Well, look, uh, at least 30 plus sprint cars taking out this title. And of course, we've got three local guys up there as well Connor Rangi, Jamie Duff, Matthew Levisage, and how could I forget, uh, Joel Myers Jr. Well, Louise, you know uh, Western Springs pretty well. It is a tough track to get a sprint car around, but uh, certainly the likes of Pickens, Allard, and uh, McDonald uh, have got plenty of experience on the track. Yeah, for sure. And the entry list is so stacked. There's nine ex New Zealand champions currently entered, which I think just goes to show the calibre of the field and of sprint car racing throughout the country. I do have a feeling that after he rolled the new car out for the North Islands and went out and won it, I think Michael Perkins has got a pretty good shot. Mm. Um, obviously, super consistent in New Zealand titles. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's only won one sprint car uh, New Zealand title before, and of course, 10 midget ones. So <laughs> definitely knows what he's doing and, and can show the patience to get it done. But I think that up there, in that top five we'll probably see Jonathan Allard, Daniel Thomas and I think that Dean Cooper might actually have something tucked up his sleeve for this one as well. Yeah it's a tricky situation with no racing happening at Western Springs so uh, effectively all those sprint car drivers are fairly green except for this uh, North Island Championship that they've just competed in. For me I've liked the consistency of Daniel Thomas and uh, he's certainly a Bay Park specialist for sure. He come down here and uh, won the championship last year. A very fast uh, quick car with a really good uh, pit crew behind him uh, and I rate uh, Daniel's chance of uh, taking out that title again. Josh you're, you're fairly new to sprint car racing but but uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, last week I uh, predicted Matthew Levisage to have a good run, and he did. So I've got to kind of stick with that train. I feel like Matthew's um, really improving with his uh, car, obviously the current 3NZ. Uh, hasn't had the luck he wanted this season, but um, he will be right up there with you, Jonathan Allards, Joel Myers Jr., and uh, uh, the likes of Jamie Larson and, and co. So keep your eye on uh, the current 3NZ. I think he will be looking to, to, take, to take a 2NZ or a 1NZ this weekend. Yeah, I think that uh, was a really good result for Matthew Levisage in the weekend. Uh, remember, Matthew's uh, destroyed three cars this year. You could uh, uh, see that the confidence was waning there a wee bit, but they went up to the North Island, which is probably the hardest sprint car racing you'll get uh, uh, in the country at the moment, and uh, he certainly performed beautifully. Uh, AJ, thoughts? Yeah, I, I also I really do feel for um, Connor Rangi. They got off to a bad start, and you know they were the innocent party in an after the chequered flag incident that uh, pretty much trashed their chassis. Mm. Um, they'll be working very hard uh, playing catch up. Uh, don't write off Jamie Duff. Uh, he did base himself up at Western Springs a number of seasons ago, and they've got a very very um, good crew chief in Daryl Clayton, mm. and Daryl was. Uh, Crew chief for Alan Wakeling up there for a number of seasons, and he knows the springs like at the back of his hand. But it's going to be tough, you know. It's going to be like sitting there watching the popcorn going around because you will just not know which bit to watch. Yeah, I suspect this championship will be for those that uh, really uh, progress through the heats well and get themselves a good grid draw. It's difficult to see someone coming from uh, grid 18, 19, 20. That's just not how you win a New Zealand championship these days. And of course, Max Guilford's there as well. Uh, Max uh, doing double duty all this year with the midgets and the sprint car. It'd be great to see how uh, Max can pilot his sprint car. Well, we're all looking forward to that national championship happening at Western Springs this weekend. And uh, good luck to our local drivers. Well, folks, that's the end of the show. My thanks to AJ Bat, Louise Smith and Josh Henderson. 
And until next time, keep your foot up it.